The next principle, E, empowerment. Um, empower your subordinates by providing them the necessary training tools and equipment to succeed. Um, it could be as simple as, you know, I I'm working with my son now doing his homework when he comes back from school. Instead of me just telling him, hey, Luke, just do your homework because I want to watch ESPN, right? I'm not empowering him, right? I'm just telling him to do something, and I'm failing also in leadership by example. So I have to turn off the TV, sit down with him, make sure that he's sitting right in his chair, that he's holding the pencil right, and show him a couple examples how to, how to do an uppercase B or L or D, whatever the letter is that he's working on that day, right? And then have him do it. Show him the standard. Sh help him do it. I want to empower him. Give him the teaching tools of why you want to sit up straight, why you want to hold the pencil properly. These are just simple principles in the physical world, but they translate in the spiritual realm, right? But you have to know your faith and practice your faith and want to grow in your faith. The gospel is full of examples of Christ empowering the apostles for the mission that awaited them. Obviously, he empowered them by the Holy Spirit when he sent the Holy Spirit, but also he empowered them by clearly communicated, concise objectives to them. Go and make disciples of all nations, right? That's a command. He told them, go and make disciples of all nations. He also told the apostles, whoever sins you forgive shall be forgiven, right? So empowering your subordinates also is an aspect of clear communications, telling them where they need to go and how they need to do it. But you want to give them the training and the tools. So you don't send someone off to do a mission and you didn't spend time training them or spend time mentoring them or give them the tools that they need to get the job done. Too many of us will, I made this mistake in my career in the military, is you assign a soldier a task and, he, and it's not the soldier's fault. He's not properly equipped, didn't receive the proper training, or didn't have the right temperament, and I gave him a task that wasn't suited for him. So he was ill-prepared. I failed as a leader by not empowering him, by not giving him the necessary tools, training, equipment to do the job. And then we get angry with the person because it wasn't done right, or he didn't do it to your satisfaction when it's really our fault. Another essential element is providing proper authority to your men. If you give them with a, t a task and you're clear and concise in your timelines and what's expected and you give them the necessary training, then also give them the authority, right, to do that job. Don't micromanage them. Give them the authority to do that job. They'll surprise you, right? You will unleash their initiative in them by doing that. Communication is essential to empowering your subordinates, also authority to your men. This empowers them to accomplish their mission. Christ bestowing upon St. Peter the keys of the church is a powerful example. Empowering the apostles by sending them, sending the Holy Spirit is another. Empowering your subordinates contains three essential elements. One, necessary, detailed training geared towards the mission that they'll find themselves. Two, Clear, concise communications that have an objective and end state, task and purpose, in a timeline. Three, subordinates must be given appropriate level of authority to accomplish their assigned task. Don't undercut them. When you give them a task, you explain it to them, you give them the timeline, you gave them the training, let them do their job. Don't undercut them. During my 20 years in the Army Special Force, Forces, I witnessed several commanders stifle the progress or potential of their subordinates because they failed to understand how to empower them. In the end, they were ineffective leaders. The men suffered and the mission suffered. So when you don't empower your subordinates, the men and the mission suffer. Your family life suffers. Your work life suffers. So understand this principle of empowering your subordinates and the elements that are contained within them. Reflections and examination of conscience. Do you micromanage your subordinates? Do you provide them with the necessary training, tools, clear communication, and authority to accomplish their assigned mission? And with a prayer. Dear Jesus, teach me to accept the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Wisdom, understanding, knowledge, counsel, fortitude, piety, and fear of the Lord. 
that I may be a living reflection of these gifts to faithfully radiate the love and mercy of Christ to those around me and under my care, to simply and faithfully glorify your will.